Text Box and Rich Text Box Control Text boxes are used to accept input from the user or used to display text. By default, we can enter up to 2048 characters in a text box. But if the multi-line property is set to true, we can enter up to 32 kilobytes of text. Now let's discuss some of the notable properties of text box control. First off, let's start with the behavior section of a text box control. Enabled. Its default value is true. To disable, set the property to false. Multiline. Setting this property to true makes the text box multiline, which allows to accept multiple lines of text. Default value is false. Password char. Used to set the password character, the text displayed in the text box will be the character set by the user. Say if you enter star, the text that is entered in the text box is displayed as a star. Read only. Makes this text box read only. It doesn't allow it to enter any text. Visible. Default value is true. To hide it, set the property to false. Important properties in the appearance section are text align. Now this option allows aligning the text from three possible options. The default value is left and you can set the alignment of text to right or center if you desire. Scroll bars. These allow you to add a scroll bar to a text box. Very useful when the text box is multi-line. You have four options with this property and they are none, horizontal, vertical and both. Depending on the size of the text box, any one of these can be used. To write any code to text box control to perform, you should have to reach to its text change event. You can reach the text box text change event by double clicking the text box control, and the text box text change event will look like this. Rich text box controls. Rich text boxes are similar to text boxes but they provide some advanced features over the standard text box. Rich text box allows formatting the text, say adding some colors, displaying particular font types, and so on. These rich text boxes came into existence because many word processors these days allow us to save text in a rich text format. With rich text boxes, we can also create our own word processors. We have two options when accessing text in a rich text box. Text, which holds text in normal text format, and RTF, which holds text in a rich text format. Now, let's work with a sample application including all these three controls, namely button, text box, and rich text box controls. The scenario here is we click the first button control. The text box should display a text message saying, Welcome to text boxes. As we click the second text box, the text in the rich text box should be converted to bold and italic. For that, create a new Windows application and name it as Sample. In the Form Design page, just drag and drop a text box, a rich text box control, and two button controls. And then set the name property of the first button control to Click Me, and set the name property of the second button control as Edit. Arrange all the controls so that the form should look like this. Now, double-click the first button control, which takes us into its click event. In the click event, just type textbox1.text equals parentheses welcome to text boxes and parentheses. This one-line command will display a text message in the text box. Now again, double-click the second button control in its click event. Paste this line of code. This code will search for text that we mentioned in code and set it to be displayed as bold or italic based on what the text is searched for. Finally, press F5 to run the application. As we click the first button control, the text box will display the message Welcome to Text Boxes. In the rich text type, our message is We are learning rich text boxes. Click on the second control as we click the edit button and the text R will be converted to italic and the text learning will be displayed in bold font. Checkbox and radio button control. Checkbox control. A checkbox, which consists of a small square and a caption set with the text property, presents the user with a yes-no choice. 
The checked property of a checkbox has the value false when the square is empty and true when the square is checked. At runtime, the user clicks on the square or its accompanying caption to toggle between the unchecked and checked states. Some of the notable properties of the checkbox are Appearance Default value is normal. Set the value to button if you want the checkbox to be displayed as a button. Background image Used to set a background image for the checkbox. Check align Used to set the alignment for the checkbox from a predefined list. Checked Default value is false. Set it to true if you want the checkbox to be displayed as checked. Check state. Default value is unchecked. Set it to true if you want a check to appear. When set to indeterminate, it displays a check in gray background. Flat style. Default value is standard. Select the value from a predefined list to set the style of the checkbox. An important property in the behavior section of the properties window is the three state property, which is set to false by default. Set it to true to specify if the checkbox can allow three check states rather than just two. Radio button control. Radio buttons are used to give the user a single choice from several options. Radio buttons are similar to checkboxes, but radio buttons are displayed as rounded instead of boxed as with a checkbox. Now, like checkboxes, radio buttons are used to select and deselect options, but they allow us to choose from mutually exclusive options. Let's work with a sample application explaining both checkbox and radio button controls. Create a new Visual Basic Windows application and name it Testing Controls. Drag and drop a checkbox control to text boxes to radio button controls, and a button control to the form. Arrange all the controls so that your form should look like this. Double-click the checkbox control and paste this code in its click event. Now then, set the property of the two radio buttons to Jane and Janet respectively, and also set its name property to Rad Candidate 1 and 2 respectively. Now, double-click the button control and paste this code in its click event. This code will show the candidate that we voted for in this text box as we click the button control. Now then, run the application by pressing F5. As we click the checkbox control, the text box will display a message that checkbox checked. Similarly, as we remove the checkbox, a message saying checkbox unchecked will be displayed. Coming into the radio button section. As we click the first radio button and click the vote button, a message will be displayed in the text box control saying, You voted for Jane. The respective action will take place as we click the second candidate. Combo box control. A combo box is best thought of as a text box with a helping list box attached. With an ordinary text box, the user must type information into the box. With a combo box, the user has the option of either typing in information or just selecting the appropriate piece of information from a list. The information is then displayed at the top of the combo box. There are three types of combo boxes, namely simple, drop-down, and drop-down list, and they are displayed in the drop-down style property. With a simple combo box, the list is always visible. With a drop-down combo box, the list drops down when the user clicks on the arrow and then disappears after selection is made. The drop-down list combo box looks like the drop-down combo box, the difference being that the user can only select an item from the list and cannot type into the text box. One of the important properties of the combo box control is the add item property. Adding items into a combo box control is similar to that of adding items in the list box control. By clicking this button, it opens up the item box control, and you can add your combo box items over here. Now let's work with the sample application. Create a new Windows application and name it Letter Address. Drag and drop two text box controls, two label controls, a combo box control, and a button control to the form. Now then, click on the combo box control, and in its property window, 
move your pointer to the Items section. Click the Ellipses button which displays the Add Items window. Insert your respective combo box items such as Mr. and Mrs. Honorable, etc. Now, click first label and set its name property to Name and name the second label Title. Select the second text box control and set its read-only property to True so that it only displays the output. Then select the button control and set its name as display full name. Finally, arrange all the controls so that your form should look something like this. Now then, double click the button control and paste this code in its click event. This single line of code will fetch the title from the combo box and joins that with the name that we are including in the name text box and displays the output in the second text box. Run the application by pressing F5. You have to enter the name in this text box and select a title from the combo box. After giving the input, just click on the display full name button. Both title and given name will be combined and the output will be like this. Panel, Group Box and Picture Box Controls Panel Panels are containers which contain other controls. Panels are similar to group boxes, but the difference is panels cannot display captions, whereas group boxes can. Some notable properties of panel controls are Border Style Property The default value of the Border Style Property is set to None you can select from the predefined list to change a panel's border style. Auto scroll property. Default value is set to false. Set it to true if you want a scroll bar with the panel. Group box control. Group boxes are passive objects used to group related sets of controls for visual effect. You rarely write event procedures for group boxes. The preceding group box has a group of three text boxes attached to it. When you move the group box, the attached controls follow as a unit. If you hide the group box, the attached controls will be hidden as well. To attach a control to a group box, just create the control anywhere you'd like and drag it inside the group box. Picture Box Control The Picture Box Control is designed to hold drawings created with graphics commands or pictures stored in graphics files such as .bmp files created with Windows Paint, ICO files of icons that come with Visual Basic, or GIF and JPEG images used on the World Wide Web. Notable properties of the Picture Box Control are Image Property, which allows adding the image to be displayed on the Picture Box. To insert an image, click on this button. Doing so opens up the Image Open dialog box. In that window, locate your respective picture and click Open. Doing that displays the respective image. Now then, let's work a sample program and combine all three of these controls. Create a new Windows application and name it Testing Picture. Drag and drop Group Box Control, a Picture Box Control, a Panel Box Control, and three button controls. Arrange all the controls so that your form should look like this. Set the text property of Group Box Control to Picture Box. Similarly, name the three button controls Sports, Weather, and Finance. Then place the three button controls inside the panel so that they cannot be moved anywhere. Now double click the first button control and paste this code in its click event. Do the same thing for the other two button controls. This line of code will fetch the image from the local location and display that to the picture box. Now run the application by pressing F5. As we click the sports button, the image related to the sports department will be displayed. Likewise, the image will be changed for the other two sections like this. Tree View Control A tree view control is a window that displays a hierarchical list of items, such as the headings in a document the entries in an index, or the files and directories on a disk. Each item consists of a label and an optional bitmapped image, and each item can have a list of sub-items associated with it. 
By clicking an item, the user can expand or collapse the associated list of sub-items. Now then, let's work with tree views. Drag and drop a tree view control onto a form. To add nodes to it, select the nodes property in the properties window. This displays the tree node editor like this. To start adding nodes, you should click the add root button, which adds a top level node. To add child nodes to that node, you should select that node and then use the add child button. To set text for a node, select the node and set its text in the text box. Assuming that you've added some nodes to the tree view, drag two labels, label 1 and label 2, from the toolbox onto the form. Arrange the controls so that your form should look like this. Then double click the tree view control and paste this code in its event. This code snippet displays the node you selected on label 2 and the path to that node on label 1. Now then, press F5 to run the application. Now let's explore how this works. In the first phase of code, we're displaying the path of the selected node. In the second phase, we are showing the current node that is selected. 